Hey guys, Crochet and here. I'm coming to you today with the August patterns from my crochet calendar and also a couple of whips and a couple of acquisitions that I got over the last couple weeks. Um, so first I'm going to start off with the patterns. So um, August 1st and 2nd is fingerless gloves. Those are pretty cute. Um, the 3rd and 4th is part 2 of those fingerless gloves. Um, the 5th, 6th, and 7th is a shawl for a doll. Uh, the 8th and 9th is a textured wintered cowl. That's a really pretty cowl. I don't want to make it. Um, the 10th and 11th is a little owl motif. That is so cute. Um, the 12th, 13th, and 14th is a doll blanket. 15th and 16th is part two of the blanket. The 17th and 18th is something called a jelly tot sprite. I have no idea what that is and that's kind of weird looking. Um, the 19th, 20th, and 21st is part two of the sprite. Uh, the 22nd and 23rd is elegance fingerless gloves. A lot of fingerless gloves this month. Um, and the 24th and 25th Part 2. Uh, the 26th, 27th, and 28th is the bulky chevron tassel hat. 29th and 30th is part 2 of the hat. And the August bonus pattern is mini clothespin dress. Those are pretty cute. Um, the pattern for August 31st is uh, sharing a page with September 1st, so I will show that when I show the September patterns. Um, so yeah, so that is it for the calendar patterns. Um, start with a couple of whips here. Um, first, I believe I showed in a previous video that I wanted to start this granny square blanket. Um, I've done a little bit on it here and there, so this is what I have done so far. Just a few rows. Um, I like how the coloring is coming out. I decided to not put the purple and the variegated too close together because it would be kind of hard to tell them apart because I've done that with another granny blanket before and I didn't like how the variegated and the close solid color came out together. So I'm putting yellow in between every color. So I think that's turning out pretty cute. Um, the final size is supposed to be 36 by 36 inches. Um, so I've got a ways to go yet. But yeah, it shouldn't be too much longer if I keep working on it steadily, although I'm going to have a lot of tails to weave in at the end and I'm going to really need some blocking, but yeah, so it's coming along pretty good. And I showed also in that previous video that I was going to do this Into the Jungle baby toy. Um, I have started the tree, um, so that is what the tree looks like without the toys on it. I hope you can see that. Um, and I have completed the trunk. <laughs> um, that took me a couple of days. So I had a little problem uh, sorting out the pattern because um, this yarn was just some scrap yarn that I got. Um, you may remember in some previous videos I had bags of yarn from like people's grandmothers that went into nursing homes and couldn't use it anymore and things. Um, I don't remember which one I got this from, but I got some balls of scrap brown. Um, and they were winded into tight balls like this. And so I don't know if um, they started out with a different gauge or if maybe the tight winding affected the gauge. Um, but when I uh, started crocheting the cone cover, it was just not coming out the size it was supposed to come out. Um, it's supposed to be done with Red Heart Worsted Way yarn. Um, and this is kind of a little bit thinner than your average red heart. So I, again, I don't know if the winding kind of stretched it out and affected that. But um, when I had completed most of the pattern for the cone, um, it had only reached to about the middle of the cone. <laughs> so I had to double um, the amount of rows in the pattern to get it to cover the whole cone. And also I had to double, or not double, but add a few more rows to the bottom to get it to fit. Um, because you crochet the cone cover and the bottom part separately and then you crochet them together. Um, so yeah, I had to alter the pattern a bit to make it fit. 
Um, I could have, I had two balls of this, so I guess I could have crocheted with two strands together to make it a little thicker, but then I didn't know if that would make it too thick for the animals to slide down the cone later. Um, so I didn't want to risk that, so I just added more rows. Um, so yeah, so hopefully I won't have that problem with any of the other yarns. And um, of course that I had to add more stitches to the rounds as well. So that's going to affect um, the number of stitches in the grass. So it's, that's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to figure out, but hopefully it won't be too hard. And hopefully I will have the grass and the tree leaves done um, by my next video. I'm hoping to have that done um, in a couple of weeks or so, but you know how slow I am. So, um, so yeah, so those are my current whips. And um, I have a couple of things that I bought at thrift stores over the last couple weeks. Um, first, um, so at our local Value Village, they sometimes put um, like smaller like cookbooks or just smaller books into bags, um, like a little handful of smaller books into bags, and they'll sell them for like two ninety nine, three ninety nine, thereabouts. Um, and my husband came across a little bag with. Um, some cookbooks he was interested in and it also contained the 2013 crochet calendar <laughs> um, and so for I think there were like five little cookbooks and this and it was only like $3.99 um, or was it $2.99 I can't remember but either way j that price just for this would have been worth it so we picked that up um, so it's the 2013 crochet calendar. I'm not going to go through all the patterns now because that would make this video way too long. I may do another um, video showing all the patterns if anyone's interested. Um, so yeah, I actually looked through them myself and there's a lot of really cute things in here so I'm excited to have more things to crochet. Um, and then I also picked up um, this Winter 1986 Crochet World Omnibook. Um, I've mentioned before, Crochet World is my all-time favorite crochet magazine, and they have been around since, I think their very first issue was 1978, I think. It was it was close to the end of the 70s, their first issue. So they've been around a long time, and I have been trying to find really old issues, because I want to, I kind of want to collect them all, but they're impossible to find now. Um, but I actually found this out of Value Village. Um, as I said, it's winter 1986, and the Omni books, I think, um, are equivalent to um, the seasonal special issues that they have now. They only, uh, from what I read in here, the Omni books came out four times a year. Um, now Crochet World has special issues that come out twice a year. Um, so I guess that's what they replaced the Omni book with. Um, I'm not sure how long the Omni books went for. Um, I gotta look that up. It's so hard to find information about old publications. It's just, <sighs> and I've, I've emailed them before asking them some information about their older issues so I know what to look for when I'm collecting and they wouldn't give me any information. It just, anyway. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that is the magazine I found and um, Value Village charges 99 cents for magazines. So I got this for 99 cents. Um, which is pretty good. Uh, back in 1986, it cost uh, $1.75 US um, or $2.25 Canadian. And current issues of Crochet World, regular issues are $6.99 Canadian and the special um, buy or twice a year issues are like $10 an issue. So <laughs> 99 cents, yes, good deal. Um, and then also from Value Village, um, I managed to find this pack of yarn and um, the reason I bought it is because this brown is actually really close to um, the brown I need for the monkey for that um, jungle toy I'm crocheting so um, now I think I have all the yarn I need for it and um, so these two balls of yarn together $3.99 you can't even get like one for that price around here at least not at Michael's um, so yeah, so that's a really good deal. Um, I can't, I don't know if I can read the uh, color names. Um, I'm gonna cover it up, I think. 
Uh, oh, this one, this color is warm brown, is what it's called. And um, yeah, this white one has the color covered up, I think. Oh, the white one is actually Aaron. So there you go. Um, and then the last thing I bought, not from a thrift store, speaking of Crochet World Special Issues, um, I got this year's um, special Christmas issue. Um, it just came out this week, I think, uh, fall 2016, and it's on display until October 31st. So you've got time to get one if you want one. You can also order it on the Crochet World website. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of cute patterns in here. Um, I'm a sucker for Christmas patterns, so anytime there's some special like Christmas crochet thing, I have to have it. Um, I already have a couple from previous years as well. This one, though, doesn't have as much decor as the other ones have had. This one is more like gifts to crochet for people, so mostly like wearable things like scarves and hats and slippers and cowls and things. But there's a lot of really cute stuff in here. Uh, there's even a pair of socks. I've always wanted to try to crochet socks, so I might have to try that. Um, and then this page has shawls and more hats and mitts and things. So yeah, so it's pretty cute. Um, so yeah, that is my last acquisition. Um, I think that's all I have for this video this week. Um, so hopefully I will have more crochet done within a couple of weeks to show you guys, and happy crafting!